Hey, I wanted to say um, something really quick before you start watching this video, Getting Started. This um, Getting Started was a video that I had created um, on, back in November, November 27th of 2023, and I had uploaded it onto Patreon, and um, I think many people know that um, that did not go over too well. However, I did want to upload some of my own videos that I created for Patreon um, onto YouTube for viewing. So um, in this video, I do, you know, suggest certain items to purchase um, if because I was hoping that, you know, if Patreon was to work out the way it was supposed to, then people would be watching, following along, and I would be giving instructions or whatever. Unfortunately, that did not work, okay? Um, but you could still purchase these items if you choose to. I do not have the list um, to purchase these items any longer, um, unfortunately, but, you know, you can at least use ideas. Um, most of the things I was suggesting were um, you could easily, you know, get on Amazon if you choose to do that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and um, let you get started in this video and I hope that you like the video and I hope that you will subscribe and I also hope that you will hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any further content. Okay, let's get into the video. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to go over what you're going to need to create your sacred space and the supplies you'll need to cast spells. Having an altar or sacred space in your home is an old tradition practiced by many cultures around the world. Each spiritual tradition has her own way of setting up an altar. Although the purpose of the altar is similar around the world, the altars themselves can be quite diverse in appearance. As a sacred space, your altar is your unique place for contemplation, meditation, connecting to the divine, and of course for spell casting. Your altar will be most powerful if you personalize it to suit your own style and taste. The only right way to set up your altar is the way that feels right for you. In this video, we will be discussing how to set up an altar space for spiritual use. We will discuss ancestor altars in a future video. How will your altar function? Will it be a permanent setup or temporary? If you have a special room or space to set up an altar permanently, that would be ideal. An altar is best set in a quiet, out-of-the-way space that will allow you to meditate, perform spells, and reflect in privacy. You should always use a flat surface for your altar. If you have enough space, a dresser with drawers will work just fine. You can use the top as a functioning altar and store your supplies in the drawers underneath. Another great option would be a desk with a shelf above. You can use the desktop as the altar and store your supplies in the shelves above. An old table can also function as an altar. You may choose to keep your supplies in a cabinet close to your sacred space to make things easier when it's time to perform a ritual. Not everyone has privacy or space to have their altar set up every day. In the past, I had been in living arrangements where I was limited on space, so I had to use a bookcase as my altar when I wanted to perform spells, and then I would remove all my special tools after it was completed. A coffee table, end table, bookcase, the top of a dresser, or any flat surface will work great as a temporary altar. I have moved a lot in the past few years, and moving heavy furniture from place to place really is not my thing. Sad to say, I only own three pieces of furniture that are made of real wood. If you are lucky enough to own real furniture, keep in mind that wooden furniture contain energies of the wood they are made from. Here is a brief list of wooden furniture options. Yes, you can perform a prosperity spell on a cherry wood table. The purpose of providing you this information is to make you aware that everything has energy. And if you do use that cherry wood table for a love spell, then that table will provide additional love energy into your working. Whether you already have the furniture that will serve as your altar or you're planning on purchasing it, it will have to be cleansed to remove all the energy and physical debris that it had before. Do a general cleaning first, meaning use regular cleaning supplies for furniture, such as wood cleaner or polish. Then focus on the spiritual cleaning by smudging it with sage or an incense with purifying energy, such as Palo Santo or lavender. I'm going to demonstrate how to smudge your furniture. You can either use a stick of incense or a stick of sage. I am using sage. You're going to need, of course, a sage stick or an incense stick. You're also going to need a lighter. You're also going to need a ashtray or something to put your ashes in. You're going to light it this way. If you're using sage, 
it takes a while for it to actually start, you know, showing the smoke. If it catches on fire, that's why you should keep your ashtray close by. So once it starts smoking like this, this is when it's ready to use. You're just gonna, you're not gonna actually touch the furniture. You're just kind of gonna go around the top of it and the sides of it so that it can get some of the smoke on it. <laughs> but you're not directly putting it on there. Now you can't see me from this angle, but that's what I'm doing. I'm smudging the, the front of it and the back and sides of it. This is not an actual piece of furniture. This is actually, actually particle board. A lot of people use particle board and I moved around so many times, I don't really have the ability to <clears throat> carry furniture so it's easy for me to just tape this up and then the movers can just put it into the moving van so <clears throat> also you're going to want to make sure that you go into the dressers drawers as well make sure the smoke goes in there hopefully your drawers are empty but i'm doing this just as a demonstration and then once you're done you're going to place it back into the ashtray and snuff it out thank you once you've moved your altar into its space, you can start adding all the fun stuff. Altar cloths can be a different can be different colors and designs. I keep a few different ones on hand for various magical uses. When choosing an altar cloth, it's best to keep in mind what the working is for. This will give you a clear idea on what color or pattern to use. For love, you may want to use hearts or cupid arrows. For wealth, you may want something with dollar signs on it. You can search for altar cloths on Amazon, or you can do like I do and go to the fabric store, where you can find a, an eclectic variety. You can choose seasonal patterns like fall leaves, poinsettias for the yuletide season, etc. A white altar cloth is standard and can be used in place of any other color if you don't have it on hand. When going to the fabric store, make sure you have the correct measurements for your altar. The elements of earth, air, fire, and water have been used as powerful tools for practitioners of the occult since the beginning of time. Representations of the element should be a part of your spell casting since your altar during spell work is a small universe that you, by focus and intention, are making into a reality just like the real physical plane. All of the elements have a corresponding direction and representations of them are placed on the altar. Some use candles to represent the color of the elements, while some use symbolism such as stones and crystals. I will go over each element to give you ideas on which you want to use on your altar. Keep in mind they are only suggestions. Remember, your altar should reflect your personal taste and how you associate objects for use are based on your own personal preferences. For example, for earth, the color examples given are green, brown, and black. You may see the earth represented as a tan color. In this case, feel free to use the color that feels right for you. The element of earth is represented by the colors of green, brown, or black. The direction of the earth element is north. Items to represent earth can be salt, dirt or soil, flowers or plants, stones or crystals. The element of air is represented by the colors of white, light blue, or yellow. The direction of the air element is east. Items to represent air can be a bell, a feather, or incense. The element of fire is represented by the colors of red, orange, or gold. The direction of the fire element is south. Items to represent fire can be, of course, fire, thunder or lightning bolts, or a knife. The element of water is represented by the colors of light blue or turquoise. The direction of the element of water is west. Items to represent water can be, of course, water, rainwater, fish, or mermaid-shaped items. Ceremonial magicians work in a circle that represents the four elements. In the beginning of my experimenting with magic, I too worked in a circle. I found that when I compared the circle methods with other forms of magic, such as hoodoo, that this was not necessary since the purpose of the circle is for one, protection, and the other is to call in the watchers, which not everyone uses, but can still be represented through the use of element symbolism. 
There is a widespread belief among several cultures around the globe that mankind has been visited by interdimensional travelers from another world. The Watchers are extraterrestrial beings that helped shape our civilization. In Southern Europe, they were referred to as the Grigori or the Old Ones. The Grigori means those who watch or those who never sleep. In some legends, they are said to have come from the stars. Some speculate that they once lived on Earth in ancient places like Atlantis or Lemuria. These angelic, or some would say alien, visitors appear in ancient texts and are referred to as the Watchers. The Watchers are mentioned in the Torah and are regarded as guardian angels. The Hebrew word would be I-Y-R. I believe it's pronounced Iyer. The Bible makes reference to them in the book of Daniel, chapter 4, verses 13 through 17, when a messenger visits the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar through a prophetic dream. The Watcher is believed to be an ancient race that has evolved beyond the need to have a physical form. The Greeks reference them to mark the four winds or directions, north, east, south, and west. In modern practices today, such as Wicca, the Watchers are referred to as the Guardians of the Watchtower, and each being rules over a directional point, making a portal of the four directional quarters for the ritual circle. The Guardians are now referred to as the Archangels. Raphael would be for the East, Michael would be for the South, Gabriel would be for the West, and Uriel would be for the North. Here is an example of how a circle works. You may wish to incorporate this into your working. Feel free to do so. Keep in mind, I now only use an altar without working in a circle. A nine foot diameter circle is drawn with chalk on the ground. Once inside, an imaginary circle is then traced with a sword, a ritual knife referred to as an athame, or your index finger. While in the circle, an imaginary light is visualized to seal it in. Since the sun rises in the east, many start the circle with calling out to Raphael first, the Archangel of the East. The invitation to the Guardian may sound something like, Raphael, Guardian of the East and Air, I invite you to the circle. A tea light candle in a yellow candle holder can be lit to welcome Raphael. Then move on to the next direction in the circle. Michael, Guardian of the South and Fire, I invite you to the circle. A tea light candle in a red holder can be lit. Gabriel, guardian of the west and water, I invite you to this circle. A tea light candle in a blue holder can be lit. Uriel, guardian of the north and earth, I invite you to this circle. A tea light candle in a green holder can be lit. While in the circle, a cone of power is created, which brings us to what some call the fifth element of spirit. Once the counter working has been performed inside the circle, the directional guardians should be released backwards, starting with the north. Thank you, Uriel, for assisting this magical working. Please depart with peace and love. You can then extinguish the candle. Thank you, Gabriel, for assisting in this magical working. Please depart with peace and love and you can extinguish the candle. Thank you, Michael, for assisting in this magical working. Please depart with peace and love. Extinguish the candle. Thank you, Raphael, for assisting in this magical working. Please depart with peace and love. Extinguish the candle. When using a circle, it's important to keep in mind the accuracy of the direction. So you may want to get a compass if you choose to work with a circle. Hey, so we're going to talk about how to set up the altar. So what I get really enthusiastic about is the altar cloth. The altar cloth is pretty much what sets the stage, I think, okay? Um, in this case, for this example, I found a altar cloth that looks like the ocean. And it's, it's really cute. And it actually has little continents and stuff like that on it. So um, you can be as realistic as you want to. Now remember, your altar is your universe. Okay, you're asking the deities that you're working with to mirror your intention. So whatever that that is, in this case, I'm hoping I want I want to travel, right? So I'm using this as um, my focal point, and I would say the altar cloth for me it is. Okay, I have a very imaginative mind, and of course, because I understand that everything that we have in this earth 
has some sort of energy, then I take advantage of it, right? So when I'm looking at this altar cloth, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, this looks like, because it really does look like a map, okay? You can't see it very well from this angle. Unfortunately, I don't have the best camera equipment. So, but let me tell you, it's it's really nice. Yeah, I can see certain like um, countries on it and stuff like that. And it's really cool because Maria really wants to travel, okay? So this is my altar cloth. Now, by the way, um, I wanted to mention when it comes to your altar, you can have your altar in any shape, okay? Um, a lot of the examples that I show, actually all the examples I showed, were either square or rectangle, okay? You can have a round altar. You can have a moon-shaped altar. You can have a heart-shaped altar. If you have a table that's heart-shaped or whatever, you can use that, okay? Um, I just wanted to make sure that you understood that, all right? So... Here is the altar, okay? So, um, and then this is, I don't actually work with deities anymore, um, but I did when I was younger, okay? But this is actually a, a representation of like a goddess or like a, a mother earth type figure. So I'm using this as an example. Now, some of you guys are gonna choose to work with a deity. Maybe you might have pit, print, um, printed out a picture, purchased a picture or purchased a statue, maybe like on Amazon or something. <clears throat> and God knows they have a plethora of them, all right? You wanna put the um, deity in the center of the altar. Now it could be like back towards the wall or it could be like right there in the center, that's fine. But because this is the focal point of where you're directing your intentions to or your request or petition, this is a focal point, right? Even though like I personally think the altar is, altar cloth has a lot of significance. Of course, something that represents a deity is going to have like the most significance. So this would go here in the front. Now, by the way, I wanted to mention something about people who are working with deities, idols, pictures of idols, images, whatever, okay? Um, these images should be treated with respect, okay? Some of you guys are gonna be working with different deities. Maybe you might petition, um, a deity for love on Friday and then on Sunday you're doing a uh, ritual to maybe uh, improve your business okay so you might be petitioning another deity so therefore you're going to remove one deity off the altar and place another one on there instead of putting it in a drawer with a bunch of mundane items okay it's more respectful for you to display the unused deity idol in like a, a cabinet that's, you know, a prominent cabinet that's, that's seen with respect, okay? You wanna be very careful when you handle these sort of things. <clears throat> and it's not because it's alive, it's about just having that sort of respect, okay? So you, ha you start off with this. So the next thing is, and this is optional, okay? Because I gave you an example of what, what ceremonial magicians use as a circle, okay? Now, um, the purpose of the circle is to number one, have protection, okay? The other purpose of this circle, of course, is to draw down power. It's a circle, right? So in that circle, it kind of creates a, a cone of power, of energy, okay, that, that they refer to as spirit. So to some people like Wiccans, they recognize five elements instead of four, the earth, air, fire, water, and spirit, okay? So we are working with spirit, okay? But everything's done like on a tabletop, okay? Instead of actually doing a circle. Now, um, when I started experimenting with the occult, I had, of course, looked into different backgrounds and traditions, okay? And I will say, traditions like Wicca are very easy. Information on Wicca is very easy to obtain in the United States, okay? And pretty much most of met most metaphysical shops who carry books on, you know, the occult are going to have more books that are written about Wicca and other European influence forms of magic than anyone else, okay? It's kind of like if you go into a, a, a Bible section or a religious section, you're going to see more books on the Bible because this is where most the majority is. I would say most people do practice Wicca. So Wicca is like the predominant religion within pagan groups, okay? Going back to this, a lot of Wiccans have use the circle okay as well as as well as other ceremonial ceremonial magicians okay because i did a lot of experimenting with wicca i did experimenting with hoodoo i did experiments of course with voodoo um and some of the comedic forms of the occult and i realized a circle is not necessary it is not necessary not every um group or culture uses circles but a lot of them do okay but it's just their way of doing things, okay? So in this case, 
if you don't choose to work in a circle, and this is still optional, to represent your forms of protection and the higher power, you could have altar candles. Now, these are the here's are the, the altar um, candle holders, okay? And typically, um, they're either both white candles or one is black and one is white. Now, I don't have a white candle, okay? Not in this, on this size, okay? So I'm using yellow as, an, as a substitute, okay? So the black would go on the left side and then the white one would go on this side, okay? And that would represent your forces of nature. Now, the forces of nature are good and they're bad. They're light and they're dark, okay? We have the sun, we have the moon. It's like the duality in nature that exists, okay? That's on the earth. And you want that representation on your altar in some way. Now, some people would say, okay, I don't want to use the um, black and white candle or any candles at all. I want to use something else that represents the force of nature. Now, you know, most people are familiar with the symbol of um, the, the, they used to call it the 69 symbol. The, um, I can't think of the, the symbol right now, but well, okay. It's the little black and white symbol that looks like a six and a nine, and it's got like a, it's white and it's black. And then on the little dot inside of it, on the black part, it has a white part. And on the big part of the white part, it has a black part, okay? Because duality in nature is found in everything. Even something that's good sometimes has a bad side and vice versa, okay? So this is the representation of it. What you could do is, with that, <clears throat> you might want to use a form of dressing oil. Now, dressing oil is for candles, but it's also used for other things. But most people who use, who, who work in candle magic use a dressing oil. And the dressing oil is appropriate for whatever it is that you want, okay? In this case, this is like a protection oil, okay? And I will put the names um, of certain companies in the description box for people who are interested in using um, per, um, not just protection oils, but you know, what they call it is magical oils, or some use just regular essential oils. In this case, this is one of the magical oils, okay? Um, they use herbs in it that have magical, or I should say spiritual qualities for protection, okay? So this is protection oil um, that I would use for these representations of nature. How you dress a candle, that varies. Some people say, well, it should be done in a specific way. I have found that it really doesn't matter, but it's mostly what matters to is to you because everything that goes into your spell is based on your focus and your intention. If certain things have a significant meaning to you, but it doesn't to someone else, that's fine. It's your spell. You're putting your energy, your thoughts, your power into it. So it's, that's what makes it more powerful. So, like I said, I'm giving examples, but it's actually you who is actually doing this, okay? So it matters, what matters to you, okay? So you would take some, some oil, right? And have a little bit on your, your fingers, and you would take the oil, this is how I learned how to do it. Starting from the middle of the candle, you would take the oil and move it up the candle, from the middle, from the middle, okay? Once the top is done, you're gonna take some more oil, and move it down from the bottom, starting from the middle, okay? And you're going to put it back on here. And then you would do the same one, same thing for the other white candle, okay? Now, there you go. Now, we're gonna start talking about the significance. We talked about the elements earlier, and the elements can be represented in many different ways, okay? Um, we usually start off with in the circle, most of the times, if you cast a circle, me people start off with with the um, east direction. Okay. Now, obviously, we're not working in a circle because my my altar is facing east. Okay. By the way, you can face your 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 altar in any direction of your home that you feel comfortable with. Okay. Um, that's up to you. I put my altar in the east section mainly for space reasons, okay? But I can work in any direction, it doesn't matter. Some people have their own favorite directions. And as you become more of a metaphysical type person, you're gonna be very sensitive to certain things. You may not, you might even change your bedroom because you don't want your, your head facing a certain direction because you're gonna become more sensitive to these sort of things, okay? 
It doesn't really matter to me, but if it does to you, feel free to do whatever. My altar is facing east, okay? So in a circle, the altar would be in the middle or it would be more like in the north is, is usually what I remember. But we're not working with a circle, okay? But we are trying to represent the elements that they see that it's so important to add in their circle. We have to have this on our altar because we want to reflect a, the reality or the world around us as much as we possibly can. So we have the duality of nature. That's a fact of life. So my representation of air, I'm going to start off with air, east, right, is going to be incense. Okay, now, incense is generally used in a spell anyway, okay, but we're trying to represent forces of nature. Now, I could say, well, I'm not going to sit here and, like, add more, in, another um, uh, symbol, add more symbolism to the air element because I'm already using incense. If you just want to, if you want to use the incense just for the air symbolance, symbolism, which is, you're going to have to use incense anyway. Okay? Incense is a part of most workings, okay? But if you wanted to add something else, like in this case, I'm adding a feather, okay? A feather that I had found uh, that fell off of a bird that, yes, I'm one of those people. I like going for walks and picking up objects like rocks and bird feathers and stuff like that because they have magical power. So in this case, I'm going to add a feather with my incense, okay? Um, in this case, this incense burner I got, there's several kinds of incense burners you can get, okay? And I like this one. I don't know if you can see it very well. Let me see if I can hold it up to the camera. This one has um, the little zodiac signs on it and it has a sun in the middle. I thought it was cool, okay? And it wasn't very much, but um, you know, you can find objects that have symbolism. So feel free to use candle holders that have, you know, symbols on it that you're interested in. Like maybe if you're interested in luck, there, there might be like a four leaf clover candle holder that you, you want to grab. Um, if you're interested in love, you can buy like heart shapes. If you're, if you're interested in like being satisfied, having abundance, you could also have, um, candle holders with, you know how they have like a basket of fruit or whatever, or like the cornucopia, right? That symbolizes abundance, okay? So those are the sort of items that you want to bring into your home and start collecting anyway, because those things signify or they, they represent what you want in life, okay? So this is what you're going to be doing, you know, throughout your your um, journey of becoming more mag magnetic to the things that you want in life, okay? So in this case... I thought that this represented like something cool and something otherworldly, so I decided to get this, okay? You you can go ahead and find the incense burners anywhere, okay? And they're very inexpensive. I, I, I've picked this one up, at, I think, the Dollar Tree. I've seen them at Walmart. I've seen them at all the other stores. Um, I even see them at grocery stores, okay? So I have my representation of air, okay? Now, what's next would be the South right? So the South is, I'm not sweating the South right now. Why? Because I really don't get into like the South. So in, what I'm saying is, is like fire, the fire from the candle for me is going to represent um, or, or give enough fire energy. In some cases, some people might want to lay like a knife um, on this part of the, on, on the, the their, their altar, okay, um, to represent fire or they might have a lightning bolt or they might have like a I don't know something that that represents something fierce or passion or something fiery you know what I mean or a dragon a, a representation of, of a dragon like a little dragon um, figurine or something just to represent that element of fire and that's completely fine okay so for water I decided to just I like this little blue glass I thought it was really pretty it's it looks like a little cauldron really it's got like three legs on it so here is my representation of water. And for earth, I decided to get a plant. Okay, now this plant, I'm not gonna keep it here. I'm actually gonna put it in my backyard in a bigger plant, um, in a bigger pot. But I figured for, the, for this video demonstration, that would work. So I have that. And then I also decided to add a few crystals. Now, we're gonna go over crystals and their, their power in another video, okay? But a lot of crystals, Crystals can be used for a additional power to a spell, okay? Each crystal has its own vibration. This is citrine, I believe, 
and this one here is like a just a regular type quartz and I'm going to go ahead and put those on the altar as well okay um, just because they add power now generally when you start putting things on the altar you want to make sure that they're cleansed okay in my first video the Sun video that was the first video that I made I do discuss on uh, I do have a video in the video I do discuss how to make holy water okay um, you can buy holy water but you can also make holy water and you can also have extra if you buy the salt and you know um, you can always make whip up a batch of um, holy water anytime you want to now I know you probably thought well only I thought holy water could only be made by like priest or something that's not true salt naturally has purifying spiritual effects so it can anybody can make it all right so let's see what else are we doing okay so I'm gonna go ahead and start with talking about candles okay now typically you want your altar candles to be taller than your working candles why because it's kind of representing the forces of nature which is something that is outside of us okay so I I like to think of it as something you know bigger than us right so I always make it sure that my altar candles when I used to use them I don't really use altar candles anymore but when I did use them they were always taller than my other candles okay um, I'm going to suggest that you start off with using chime candles chime candles can come in sizes of four to six inches okay in this case I believe these candles are let me see I got a ruler here um let me take a look measure this candle I never really paid attention and it doesn't say it on the box okay these are four inch candles okay these are four inch candles and it's ideal to have them in this size why because when you do a spell most of the time you want to make sure that the candle burns down completely if you have like a 12 inch taper you're going to be waiting an awful long time okay there is no rule that says you have to have a 12 inch candle so you want to get this done as soon as possible one of the reasons why I started looking for ways to cut corners in magic practices is because I felt as if like the, you know for example casting a circle just really isn't practical sometimes especially when you think about how you have to prepare for everything it's very time consuming so and I started looking at other cultures and other ways of, of, of people who, who who practice the occult and saw so, hey you know they don't do all this so is it really necessary <laughs> not really so if you can cut corners why not and save time okay so this is four inches so in this case I'm going to use two candles now when you're working with candles you can let's just say for example you're doing a prosperity spell right your prosperity spell looking for the other candle okay your prosperity spell um might just you just want to you might just want to represent prosperity and that's the only candle you want on your altar okay maybe sometimes you might want to represent other people in this case you're going to use more candles you might use two candles to represent somebody let's just say for example you hang out with a group and you, you you're you're doing something okay and you want to you want your friends to be receptive to you the idea that you're posing okay so you have two candles to represent them and one candle to represent you okay it depends on what's important in your mind and how you see things like I said you know you might be doing a spell to um, maybe influence a bunch of people in this case you could just write the group or something or you could actually have like if there's five people in the group you can have five different candles in there if that's what you want to do okay what makes sense to you okay now you should inscribe your candles okay but let's talk about right now as I'm going to talk about inscribing them and then also the little accessories that you're going to need and also I'm going to follow up with a list at the end of this part of the video to let you know the stuff that you're going to need I'm going to this, this pair of scissors here okay. in this particular box of chime candles they're individually wrapped which is cool you know but just so you know everything on your your altar should be cleansed first okay you want to make sure that your altar is not touched by other people if you live with other people you know you just say hey you know what um this is my sacred space and um you know please don't touch it and a lot of people will respect that okay um and some people who, do, who don't have the ability to have you know a space of their own or who have that space to themselves they don't have to worry about it they might want to designate a whole room to their magical working they could have a whole room filled with supplies 
posters, designs, whatever they want. That's their little magical room. You know, feel free to do whatever you want to do. I'm just giving you ideas, okay? Sometimes you can't keep your altar up all the time. And I mentioned that before. Sometimes you have to take things down. In that case, um, you know, just do the so accordingly. Make sure you have a designated place to keep all your magical supplies. And then um, just take them out as needed. Once you, if you do have to use a coffee table, make sure you might wipe it down. Do a, a cleansing either with holy water or dry smudge cleaning like I showed you earlier in the video. Okay, so here we go. Here's a candle here. And here's a candle there. All right. Now, I'm also going to put toothpicks on the list for your video in the, um, in this video because um, I I like to inscribe on my candles. Meaning, I like to write things. You could write your name. You could write your you could write symbols on it. Whatever the intention is. Okay. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and write on here. And another thing, you know, um, you're probably wondering, what is she writing on there? Here's the thing about magic, okay? Magic is secrecy, okay? You don't tell people what you're doing spells for. You don't share what your intentions are. It's not because you're trying to be sneaky or disrespectful. What you're doing is you're building power, okay? Have you ever had an idea? You were, like, really gung-ho about it. You are, like, filled with excitement. You are, like, totally stored with all this energy. You shared that idea with somebody, and then after you told them, you really weren't on fire anymore, okay? You dispersed energy, okay? When it comes to magic, all your energy goes into your spell, okay? That's why secrecy is so important. Okay, now... Like I said, everything should be cleansed with holy water. Okay, now I also want to talk about this particular water. This is Florida water. Now, Florida water has been used by a lot of hoodoo practitioners as well as voodoo practitioners in the South, okay? Um, it is a alternative to holy water and you can use it, okay? Um, I do keep this and you can find it, um, even Walmart sells it. Um, you could use this, that as well. And you can use holy water to cleanse your candles. Okay, also keep a box of Kleenex or get yourself a, um, a box of like, you know, cleaning cloths that are designated for your ritual use. Okay, in this case, I'm just taking a little bit of holy water and I'm just kind of cleaning my, my candle a little bit, you know, first. Okay, it's already been inscribed. I already wrote what I wanted to say on it. Okay, and now I'm going to dress it with some oil. Okay, now this oil is called Road Opener, all right, because Maria wants to travel, right? Okay, so in this case, I'm just going to take a little bit of the Road Opener oil. Here we go. And like I said, you start with in the middle, in the middle, raise it up, and then bring it down with the oil. Make sure that it's completely covered in the oil. Do that. this particular incense let me see I didn't pick out an incense let me grab one um, I keep this big bucket of incense next to my little sitting altar. Let's see. I think I'm going to go with this one. Okay. And I'm going to put it in my incense holder like this. Is there anything else that I wanted? I wanted to talk a little bit more about the, um, 
the um, inscribing on candles. And I will put this in the list. I use a toothpick. Now, when I first started working with the occult, okay, I, like I said, I studied a lot of different traditions. At one time, I did have what they called a bowline knife or bowline knife, okay? This is a bowline, this is a ritual, ritual, a knife specifically used for ritual, okay? What it's used for, it has two purposes, to inscribe on candles or inscribe on other things, writing, okay? which I found using a blade awkward on small four inch candles. So I stopped using it. I don't know what happened to that knife. Okay, but if you choose to use one, that would have to be cleansed too before you use it. Most of the time when you have those sort of items, they come with their own um, case. If not, go ahead and just wrap it into a, um, a nice cloth that you, you like and that you feel is, it's gonna protect it and keep it with all your other magical supplies, okay? All right, so. Also, you might want to purchase a butane lighter. I'm going to recommend a butane lighter for the, the sole purpose of the, the flexibility, okay? With, in in your, your practice of magic, you're going to be using different kinds of candles as you go on. And like I said, you know, their candles come in different shapes. In this case, we're starting off with chime candles, okay? But you can get, you can get candles in all kinds of shapes. If you're interested in buying a house, they have candle shaped houses. If you want to do a spell on maybe yourself or someone else, hopefully with their permission, you can purchase candles in the shape of skulls. You can shape you can purchase candles in shapes of body parts and they're anatomically correct, okay? You can shape you can purchase them on Amazon. Just go ahead and put male and female candles and they'll a whole you know different varieties will will come up and i've used those in the past but i don't really get into all of that anymore as i've grown i don't really need as much tools and as you start becoming more familiar with magic and, and making sort of certain connections in your mind you will you will rely less and less on props like i call all of this stuff props because i don't really use it anymore that's why I don't have like certain candle colors because I don't need it as much anymore. Like I can, I pretty much can work within my mind. Okay. But going back to the candle holder. Okay. You'll, sometimes you're going to use novena candles. Okay. Novena candles can be dressed just as what, just as much as these candles that stand alone like this. Okay. But what you would do when you would dress a novena candle is you would poke holes in it. You can also inscribe on the candle, just you would inscribe on the top surface of the candle and then you would just take some dressing oil and rub the, rub within the circle of the candle. The reason why I recommend a butane lighter is there's times when you're working with novena candles where you have to extend, extinguish it and come back to it in the next day or so. And sometimes the candle burns down to like, you know, a, 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 a part of the middle of the candle where it's difficult to reach with a regular lighter. So a butane lighter, you know, it's, you're not going to deal with those problems. Also, uh, I also want to talk about, um, you know, I know there's things called flameless candles. Uh, flameless candles are becoming quite popular. And I know that um, I even seen them in like some of the metaphysical stores. Now, uh, I think they're fine if you just want to illuminate your room. You want to use them for relaxation. But I see that there's a big... There, I see the significance and the importance of using candles. Why? Because I feel as though I can get readings on the candles. Okay, candles burn a certain way when they are, and they communicate with you in a way. Like, for example, have you ever lit a candle and the candle flame was just kind of burning like really low? And you're like, why? Why in the world is it burning so low? And that means something. Okay, it usually means that there's not enough energy in it. And you, what you want is you want a nice candle flame that's steady that doesn't flicker too much if it flickers too much there might that's an indication that there's some people who are talking about it or talking about your goals or working against your goals now i've used novena candles I, I remember leaving a particular employer and i was scared <clears throat> to death figuring out trying to figure out what was going on okay i burned three novena candles like this in a row they were all red all right and two of them broke. That was a sign for my ass. I didn't quite get it at the time, but it was a sign, okay? Candles do communicate with you, all right? Um, 
in this case, you know, like I said, candles are not supposed to, these are not supposed to break, but they will send you signs. In this case, when the, when the candles broke, um, that was a sign, okay? But they also send other signs. If you get a candle that smokes a lot, there's a lot of smoke in the top part of your candle, that's an indication that someone is working against you or that there's an obstacle that has to remove. Now, not all spells work right then and there. Like if it's indicating that there is a smoke, there's smoke in this candle or something like that, or like, for example, when you're looking at these particular candles as they are burning, right? Um, the ideal burning of a candle would just be like straight burn down, okay? If you see a lot of dr excess dripping and like, you know, like it's just like, it, or it's leaning one way, the candle's kind of leaning one way, or the wick is starting to curl up in a certain way, that's an indication that you have an obstacle. So you might have to redo your spell, or when you're doing a spell during the waxing moon, like this is a waxing moon spell, okay? During the waning moon spell, you might want, during the waning moon phase, you might want to do a spell to remove the negative energy that's going on around your spell. Okay, it might be a working process. Most of the time when you're working a spell, it takes about, I would say, a moon phase, about two weeks for you to start seeing signs, if it's something simple. But certain things are not just as simple. Some things have to be worked through. Like, for example, if you're going to be starting a business and you know you want to launch it sometime in the summer, you have a lot of work in you. you got a lot of planning to do. you got a lot of all this sort of stuff. So each time you're doing, you're coming to the altar, it's going to be something different, working towards your goal. Okay, it's a long-term thing. Some things are quite simple. Like, for example, you want to get the attention of a guy, right? Those are pretty simple. And you're going to see results in those pretty quick, okay? But things that don't take long-term things, like maybe somebody's going to college and they want to work, work, work towards their goals or whatever, that's long-term, okay? It's pretty much the duration of when you're going to be there, okay? So uh, you, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of working and, and seeing the signs of the candle, and they all matter, okay? So... Generally, to start off the, the ritual, let me see if I'm going through my list here. Oh yeah, first thing on the list, um, and like I said, I will give you a recap of everything. You want to get a book, okay? Now I keep a notebook of my my um, rituals and and things that I've done, like you know, candle burnings and stuff like that. You want to make sure that you record the date the time and the moon phase also um the items that you used in the ritual okay and you're also going to get this book so that you could take notes okay so if you didn't take notes before start taking notes okay you could easily pick up a notebook anywhere or you can get something fancy like some people who who call themselves witches use what they call a book of shadows a book of shadows is basically a list of all their little magical secrets and spells that they keep in the book um, you can do that too. And they do have some pretty fancy ones on Amazon. Just type in Book of Shadows and you will be able to find a plethora of beautiful Book of Shadows. Even things that look like Harry Potter type stuff. But if that's what you're into, they have it. So go ahead and check that out. Also, um, in, the, in practicing magic, it's kind of looked upon as a negative thing to blow out your candles. Like I said, there's times where you might be doing a spell that takes a few days. Okay, and, and so you're going to extinguish the candles and come back at the same time the next day. But you don't just want to blow out your candles. Now, I know like in birthday cakes, we blow out the candles. That particular, and yes, a birthday candle cake, cake uh, ritual is basically a spell. It's basically trying to wish you a birth, happy birthday. It's long lost its meaning, but that's basically what it is. And it's okay to blow out your candles. But when you're ritual, in ritual during altar, um, yeah, in at the altar, okay, during rituals, it's ideal to use a candle snuffer, okay? So what you would do is, I'm just going to do this really quick and to give you an idea. Let's see here. Talked about the beauty and later talked about the dressing oils. Like I said, dressing oils can be, you can find dressing oils for anything. You can find them for love, money, wealth, uh, sex, whatever it is you're looking for, you can find them in there. Um, and the beauty and lighter, the toothpicks, or whatever. And the representation of the elements, and then the candle snapper, and then talk about it. Um, I talked about that. All right. So, I guess we're going to get to the part where we're going to light the candles, right? I'm not working with altar candles, okay? But if you are not working with altar candles to represent the forces of nature, 
that's fine. You can have something to represent the forces of nature if you want to. Like I said, that little, um, I cannot think of that thing. I think it's called a towel symbol, that 69 symbol, the black and white. You could use that if you want to, okay? But I don't use these candles. And if I did use these candles, and like I said, okay, I want to make sure that I, 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 I make this very clear. These candles would not, you would not expect these candles to burn out all the way. Okay, so if you do a love spell and you use these candles, you're going to extinguish them at the end of your love spell. Okay, and chances are they're still going to be kind of tall. Okay, because the other little candles are probably burned down by then. Okay, the next time you do a spell, you would use it for a prosperity spell or whatever. These altar candles are always going to be used for every ritual until they burn down and you replace them. Okay, they're always going to be a part of it if that's what you're into. You, like I said, you could use a um, a symbol for that instead, um, like a black and white checkered, um, what do you call it, cloth. You could use um, anything that's black and white, anything that represents those forces of nature. You don't have to use candles, and you don't have to use the 69 symbol. You can use something else, okay? Um, you could do something if you want to add the element of protection because you're not working it within a circle. Feel free to do so. Um, it could be um, what represents protection? A star. Stars represent protection. You can put a star on your altar. That would work and that would serve as protection as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and start this really quick so you can just get an idea. Now, <clears throat> As we go through other videos, I'm going to be talking about writing spells specifically, okay? But this is just an idea of what the altar looks like and how it's it's set up, okay? That was the purpose of it. But you know me, I just kind of go on and on and on. But anyway, um, so, but when you do write spells, you want to make it kind of melodious, okay? So if you have the ability to write poetry or music, then that's right up your alley. You're not going to have any problems at all. For people who like me who aren't so good at that sort of thing, I'm just doing my best. Keep in mind, this is not like a deity like Aphrodite. I'm not working with Artemis. I'm not working with, you know, Bridget or any other deity. This is just a beautiful goddess that I did get at a store that does not have any sort of history behind it other than the fact that she's holding the world. Okay. Um, you could, I guess you could call her Gaia, you know, if that's what you wanted to call her, you know. You could give her a name, I guess. That, that wouldn't hurt, but... This is just an example. So I have my elements. I have my earth. I have my air. I have that represented two times. The candles, when they're lit, that's going to be my fire. And I have my water. I'm ready to go. So here we go. So what you do is you want to start off with your incense first. Okay, where's my butane lighter? Am I sitting on it? Oh, yeah, I am. Okay, you want to start off with your, in your, your lighter first. Um, and then you also want to make sure that you have your, your peace and quiet, so tell your family members that you're going you're gonna to need some time. You can turn on some music, okay? I highly recommend music during rit ritual. Some ritual music, depending on what it is, has like, what do you call it, nice beats to get into. Or some of them have chants to work up your energy. I recommended uh, Russell Paul because his, his, his music is just like, you know, you can get into it. And that's what you want, that kind of, it's the kind of energy that you want to work into or work with to get you focused, okay? So feel free to have music on if you want to. I've, I've, I used to know this guy when, when I was younger. He used regular, what I call secular music, to do his spells, okay? He was really into, like, the Norse mythology stuff. He worked with heavy metal music to do his rituals, okay? Hey, you know what? It, like I said, it, it's all about your, your personal choice and what, what resonates with you, okay? So... Finally, we're going to start lighting these candles, but when it comes to um, your actual spell, um, you want to make sure that it kind of rhymes. And if you can't rhyme, that's okay, okay? Because it's really, I'm sure the deities understand your intention, okay? And please forgive me for not being the best writer. I'm writing this as a form of, of as, a, as a demonstration, okay? I don't have great writing music um, uh, writing abilities okay so I'm, I'm kind of cringing as I'm saying this but I think you guys get the message so what you're going to do is you're going to always start lighting your incense first okay there's more room on the altar I'm going to move these over here Okay. 
Now, like I said, you can like cringe if you want to, because I'm gonna cringe too, because I really don't like, you know, sharing things I write like that with other people, but um, you know, whatever. Anyway, Mother Earth so far and but yet so near, around the world may there only be happiness and cheer. I know, it's horrible, right? But anyway, I ask today that in this hour, my soul tribe will be will understand magic power. Horrible, I know, it's terrible. But I'm trying, okay? And when, by the way, why I'm by myself, like, I don't really care, and I don't really say things out loud. It's always in my mind. But I'm giving you an example, okay? All right, may no one, I ask that you'll be peace, and I ask that they have the power and then you, you close it by asking that there no harm will be done. Like some people who practice Wicca say, by the power of three times three, let no one be harmed, so mote it be. And the reason why is because once magical energy starts working up, it's got to go somewhere. And it's got to find the resources to give you what you want. Now let's just say, for example, you have, um, you're asking for a money spell. Okay, and so you're working up this energy. This energy is going to start looking for where you can get that money. And your rich aunt might be able to give you that money, but she's not ready to die yet, right? So that's why you ask that no one be harmed because magic is not good or bad. It just is, and it just does, okay? So you make sure that people are protected and you ask that no one be harmed, okay? That there'll be more specific things as we go along. I just wanted you to see the altar. But as I was running my mouth, I wasn't lighting the candles, okay? So the candles right now are lit, okay? And of course, you know, I would repeat this spell. Isn't it? Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? It's gorgeous. <laughs> Ooh, maybe I don't want this to get caught on fire, so I'm just going to move that a little bit. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that, um, you know, once you say the ritual, and generally I would recite that ritual, you want to make it short too, sweet and concise, because you're going to repeat this about three times, okay? Th repeat what you're going to say to your deity about three times, but at the end, definitely make sure that no one gets harmed, okay? And then, of course, you're going to let these candles burn down. Once they're completely burned down, your ritual's done. Now, mind, mind you, you can walk away and go about your business. You can go ahead and do the dishes. Make sure you check in on your altar because, you know, you don't want to ever leave candles alone, okay? But I'm saying is, your ritual is done. You don't have to sit here and, like, watch it the entire time. You can actually get on with the rest of your work. Your intention is already set and you're ready to go, okay? I think I pretty much covered everything in this video and I will, um finish up. Thanks. Just a quick review of the list that you'll need. You'll need a notebook or book of shadows, altar claws, you can get a variety of them, or you can use just white. You'll need an image or a statue of your chosen deity. You'll need some toothpicks, or you can get that bowl eye knife. Um, you'll need a blue tain lighter. The two altar candles are optional. If you do go with those, you'll need two white ones, or one black and one white. Um, and you'll also have to get the accommodating candle holders that will fit for those candles. You'll also, um, I'll put the link in the description box for the chime candles. You'll need at least four candle holders to accommodate the chime candles. You'll, I will put the link in the description box for the dressing oils. The dressing oils are going to be um, for the specific needs that you have. If you're looking for love, if you're looking for money, you'll be able to find them in the description box. Also, I put in the candle snuffer. You do not need a candle snuffer. It's not, it's not required because you can sniff out candle with your two fingers. Once you wet them, just go ahead and, and pinch it out. You don't have to get the candle snuffer but it's an option. Um, I also put on the list this sage stick for cleaning your altar space and other things that will need to be cleaned. Like for example, you might purchase that bowl line knife and you might wanna cleanse it before you use it and you might wanna do a tri cleanse. You can use the sage stick or you can use an incense like Palo Santo or lavender or some other purifying incense. 
Also on the list is incense for the specific use for your spell. You may want to um, do in a spell for love or money. You want to make sure that you use the accommodating incense. And then last on the list would be holy or Florida water. It looks like I was right. It is the Tao of symbol. I cannot pronounce it. I try to be very careful about those things, but this is the symbol. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm going to be putting out another video that will be covering co colors, and then we will be doing some instructional videos on specific spells. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, I want to thank you for taking the time out to watch my video. If you want to see more videos in the future, make sure you like my videos and subscribe and also hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my new content. Thank you so much again for watching.